So the way this works is you have a discharge permit, and if you don't meet your discharge permit requirements, there's a basically the fining can be up to ten thousand dollars a day per violation. So basically, if you just said I'm not doing this and walking away, then the state would, I mean, your permit rider, which isn't these these guys are the construction guys, but your permit rider would basically issue the NOV and start saying, okay, you violated this and this and this, and here's your fine. And then if you don't do it, then they increase the fine. And ultimately, I think they could send you to the, they'd sick the Department of Justice on some people is ultimately what they do. But initially, it's the leverage the state uses is a fining um, process through the attorney taking. <laughs> <laughs> well, in 90, 94, we got, we got um, fined 25,000 a day per violation. Yeah, so I they'll they'll yeah. throw it out if it's there's there's a however many days it was sorry Brad it was for non no, non reporting I don't remember what we paid because we just have to then report so so you might know I don't remember I don't know if you know but okay. yeah. so what they'll do is it so ten thousand dollars a day if if they really issued a twenty five they would be saying you were cheating or lying or doing something dishonest. So there's a threshold that they determine that something is, you know, if you're doing something cheating, then that goes up to that 25, well, so. The, the wording was, if you willfully don't do it. So, and that's, that's what we're saying, is if yeah, we just say, right. no, we're not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. right. Thanks, yeah, we appreciate it. the offer, but we're just not gonna really Here's the keys yeah. of the plant state, take it over, or we're out of the school business. Yeah, yeah, so is that basically what would happen, is the state would eventually come and just take it over? I don't think they would. They would find you, and find you, and find you, and you'd probably be in a big fight. I, I, maybe you know that. <laughs> I don't know that anyone's tried that, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm I mean, usually what happens is, is you know, we, we send out a letter and, and notice of a violation, you know, and we have a matrix for assigning a fine value to it. Um, if, if we don't get any leverage, then EPA, and EPA doesn't like the route that we're going, then EPA overfiles and they take control and they come in with the Department of Justice and, and pursue people criminally. Take the mayor to jail. <laughs> hey now, not everyone else yeah. in flesh is a candle. So, the, the, well, the, the mayor then, doesn't have a vote on this. So. <laughs> and the reason I ask, I mean, I know like with, with um, just for instance, with No Child Left Behind, with the, the education <clears throat> um, legislation, when something happens that the schools don't perform to that level, the federal government comes in, or this, you know, through the state, whatever, they come in, they basically fire everybody. And then they might hire some back, maybe here and there, but then they just take that over and they go with it. And so I, I just wondered if it would, might be something similar to that, and if they would just come in, take care of it, they would do whatever I, I, they have to do to the, to I, the rates. I have, I have not, never heard of any, uh, you know, the state coming in and taking over a sewer treatment plant. I mean, we've even, we're, we've renegotiated bonds on, on projects so that you know we wouldn't have bonds default so we wouldn't end up in that kind of situation where we ended up owning this sort of treatment plant. So <clears throat> I think we, you know, we, so we, we, we generally don't come in and take it over. We just hammer you until you comply. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I guess that you can see, you, you can see though our, um, I mean, it's a little tongue in cheek, but it's also a little bit serious is we have a lot of how much is the fine going to be, and is it more than the 17 million that we've been told it's going to cost to do this, or more? Right. It, it would. It would. It would have been, it right. Would have but that, it, but that's my point. Yeah. Is that it, it, so? When we look at the cost analysis of this, it's like okay. Is you know, if it's 10 bucks a day to pay the fee, we'll pay the fee. But 10,000. That's a different matter. Right. So just. Your thought, they have as part of the finding process, they have what they do is what they call an economic benefit, and they don't, they won't allow anyone to have economic benefit. So if you delay, like if someone, and I've seen this a lot where someone will delay on a project, and so let's say it was $17 million, and they say, okay, you delay five years at $17 million, so you save this much interest by not paying that. And so on top of your other fine, you have to pay that too. So that's, so 
that's to basically make it so people so don't do don't. exactly that. And it, it probably affects industry more than municipalities, but but that is part of the finding process. They, they call it economic benefit analysis. Just And so they'll come in and they have a model that basically looks at what the stock market did when it was doing real well and says that's the going interest rate <laughs> and there's your money. So I think it's like eight or nine percent. Right yeah. Now. It's I think the last time I I mean it was funny because I was looking at the model and it went through um, right when right before the stock market went bad. So it was like nine or ten percent was the was the interest that they said you would earn on your money. So, could could we get a copy of this presentation sent to the council? And, and then we can put it on the website too. I know yeah. it'd be a little confusing, but yeah. still. Yeah, we, so, so I just I just did some quick calculations, and if we didn't come into compliance by the appointed time, and we incurred a ten thousand dollar per day fine, that's for one violation. That's, that's, violation. Not, yeah. that's uh for the city of Payson, that's sixty-six dollars per month per household. That would they would be responsible for the fines if we don't want to come compliance. And that's not excluding economic benefit. Yeah. And that, is that including every violation? Because when that's one violation. violation. That's one violation. That's one violation. That's one violation. TDLs, phosphorus, nitrogen. Each of those would be its own violation, correct? Correct. Each of those would be its own nitrate, violation. Nitrate, nitrate. Total, whatever, inorganic, organic. Well, and sometimes they can get one because some of them are a 30 day average. So if you exceed the 30 day average, that technically can be 30 violations by itself. So, so it's although you missed one, it can turn into 30. So they, they can make, they can leverage that pretty strong, I guess is what I'm saying, depending on. And while we're on that subject, though, Brad, is there any way to get to get a um, extension? So, that, like, to go like, if we say, okay, we're really working on this, but we're also trying to do possibly a regional thing. We just need a little more time. Can we get to 2021? Yeah, we, we, we do we do do that. You know, a lot. You know, they're called consent agreements. Basically, you know, um, you agree that you're going to be a, you're, you're going to be a deadline. And, and we work with you to meet that deadline. So, you know, we, we've, we've done that before. We're doing well, that with Salem's always. working on one of them right now, aren't they? I, Salem might be working with one, because they, they're getting hit with the same 3C chronic ammonia problem. We've had one for a number of years with Logan City because they're hitting, getting hit with the same 3C um, yeah, I, issue. Yeah, I anticipate when we get the permit negotiated, we'll probably have some compliance schedule for some of the changes in the permit. <coughs> Some of the things we're already supposed to be doing. Well, we aren't yet, but I anticipate that the when the permit comes out, we won't be able to meet all those requirements. Oh. And at that point in time, I anticipate we'll have that consent agreement or a compliance schedule we call it sometimes to address some of those issues already. I would assume they charge you some. Oh, they don't. Okay. No, no, yeah. no. It's. It, there'll be targets, so they'll so say sure. planning's done by here, and then as long as you get the plan right. done, okay. design's done by here, then you're, so they'll put milestones as part of that agreement. That, so you can't just sit back and wait yeah. for the last minute. They're, they're milestones, and and there can be uh, fines associated with not meeting the milestones. The, you know, if there's no willful not effort to not meet the milestones, you know, they we can impose a fine a fine for not meeting those, but. You know, as long as everybody's working towards meeting right. the schedule, and we right. can we can grant extensions to the schedule if they're appropriate. Okay, but as long as we're working with you folks, right. you know what right. we're doing. And we we try to have good relationships with the cities and municipalities. What's confusing me about this is that the 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 increase or or uh, you talked about fertilizers. Uh, what is causing this increase? Just in well, everything that's you know, everything that goes into your into your toilet, into your sinks, into your drains, they all have nitrogen. They all have phosphorus. Um, you know, a lot of food wastes have a lot of organic materials, and those those some of those get taken up during the treatment process, but some of those pass through the treatment process. Detergents. Yeah. Detergents. Um, recently, I 
the, uh, phosphorus and dishwashing detergent was banned in the state, I but it's still in your laundry soap. I thought they took care of all of that in the 60s, so uh, that's, that's where I was heading, though, as, as homeowner, citizen, whatever you want to call it. Uh, are there not things we could do to mitigate some of this garbage? Wrong word, but... Uh, um, I mean, well, you know, um, non-phosphate soaps and stuff, but I thought that was pretty much phased out a long time ago. So a big portion of those actually come from DNA. So uh -huh. the bacteria that we grow in our gut that we expel to the treatment plant and the bacteria we grow in the plant, that's a big portion of it right there. So that's kind of hard to hear. Just that, especially the ammonia. Yeah, especially well, the ammonia. The, the other option I've always had for treatment is we talk about just sending corks out to everybody and say, plug it up, <laughs> just hold it for the rest of your life, and we'll be set. There's an old joke about that, which I won't go into. <laughs> well, we're, we're to this point, uh, Mayor, do you have anything you want to bring up or, or anything? Nelson, do you want to be concerned? concerned that we, we're passed along to uh, whatever happens here is passed along to Elk Ridge City. And uh, in the discussions that we've had with you in Salem, that seems to me that is, it surely needs to be looked at very, very carefully. Uh, economics would seem to be better going that direction, or at least possibly. Uh, we have to look at the numbers very, very closely, obviously. But, uh, we're, we're a very small fish in this pond, but we get impacted very directly. Right. Well, and I just want to make sure where we're having this discussion tonight, these guys, that you're, if you guys have any concerns or anything, that you bring them up. Yeah, the, the biggest concern that we've got is making sure that that amount that is being passed along uh, to our city, and which is being passed along to your residents as well, is going to be an accurate amount. We, we need to look at those, the cost breakdown of, of the amount of why, why we came to that particular figure. How does that impact uh, us? Is it, is it impacting Payson and us the same, or is it impacting us differently? We want to make sure of that. I was hoping that uh, Travis could make sure that we've got that meter in place and so that we can find out what kind of a flow is really coming from our city and making an appropriate evaluation there. So uh, I know I've talked with our uh, public works along with, and he's supposed to be getting with Travis. We'll see where that's at. Okay. And if these guys meet with Bruce and, right. and whatnot with Thorsgren and start combining and start working that way and then I think one of the things we really need to do is nail down if we're right. if we're cities or, or five or whatever right. we're going to do. Can I just ask a quick question? If that is, so you're estimating that this is going to cost about 18 million dollars, correct? 17 to 18 million? <coughs> more than that. Or more, more than that, that considering, yeah. Cause, you know, closer to 30. Okay, so if you're saying that we're going to be raised and we're going to be sharing this cost with Elk Ridge, and you haven't. When are, when are we planning on starting to implement this cost to the Payson City residents and the Elk City Elk Ridge residents? Thanks.